one. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in this wonderful world. Hello, Amanda. Amanda, I cannot hear you. Can you check your volume? Folks, this is a first where we cannot hear Amanda. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's smiling. That's a good thing. Keep her smiling now. I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the broadcast today. We've got quite a few topics to go over with you today. And as Amanda's getting her camera work in, you, know, you would think that we'd have all of these technical challenges worked out, but you think about how far we've come in just such a short amount of time with all of the technical accomplishments that we've made over the years. It's just amazing how we have all of these platforms that we get to work with and how we can, you know, um, collaborate with others around the world next door, down the hallway, and all the way around the world. I'm broadcasting from Oakley, California. And uh, once you join, you'll be in a guest and show them. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. There you go, Amanda, I think you're in. Am I um, just oh, can, you hear, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Thank you for that guidance there. <laughs> She's the technical wizard, so every once in a while uh, she needs to help this old girl get some things done. So <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate that. Okay, okay. I think you would have had sign language, and I'm glad you didn't give me the one finger sign language. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, I missed how you started off there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're using a platform called Be Live, everybody, and I'm still getting acquainted with that. Um, uh, Amanda had control of uh, had control of all of the bells and whistles with this the first couple of episodes and uh, I've got them this time so I'm still getting acquainted with how everything works so anyway um, let's see if I can there we go bring us both in here yes I like that one better ah, how about that one okay so folks um, thank you and welcome appreciate having you here today my name is Christy Matthews I'm broadcasting from Oakley California and I don't know how many miles that is from you, Amanda, but uh, go for it. Yep, I'm Amanda Ashton Booth, and I am in Scotland, uh, UK, in a little place called Inverurie, um, a little bit out in the sticks. Uh, not too bad, though. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we are the Fibropreneurs. Good morning, good morning. Good to have you all here. So we've got quite a few things for you today, and um, we're going to start off with our fibro fog of the moment, and uh, we're going to share a couple other things. Um, we're going to talk about essential oils, uh, talk a little bit more about Epsom salt baths, um, what kind of personality types are prone to fibromyalgia. Um, when it's when working becomes too difficult and you're thinking about is it time to hang it up maybe do something else and sex is sex good for fibromyalgia well we'll talk about that too and we're going to close out today with some tips on how, uh, on how to not stress yourself out about your home-based business on so just some marketing tips so that you can keep your business going when you feel like you can't so, Amanda, why don't you take it away, would you please? Yeah, um, so 
Uh, I did want to um, do the fibro fog moment of the week last week, so I've been saving uh, a couple up. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the funny one. You know, there's always a, a, a fibro fog moment where you laugh at yourself and you find it really funny because it's just so silly. Well, mine's <laughs> it's so funny. I can't even say it. Um, I was making my cup of tea and uh i was just in cuckoo land as always <laughs> went to the fridge took out a carton and poured some apple juice into it instead <laughs> of the milk so <laughs> that was my oh you idiot moment of the week you know and laughing and i found it really funny but um the 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 other side of it is you know there's always um a moment with fibro fog where we can feel really teary or embarrassed um where we've done something and we just feel so stupid in that moment you know and i think it's really important to hit upon that point because it it happens to us all you know and a, another thing is you know what it happens to everybody not just people with fibromyalgia, okay? It happens to everybody. Everybody does stupid things from time to time. However, when we do something silly or we have a bit of a brain fog moment, we we kind of beat ourselves up about it more. Um, so my uh, my my moment of that, like over the, over the last like week or so was um i'm helping out down at the community center now the one thing that i was most nervous about was the till because it's working with numbers and it's all like technical and the till and stuff i was really really worried about that and i did um the cashing up at the end of the night which was pressure on me in the first place you know i'm cashing up i'm in charge of cashing up all this stuff and um i kept putting in the wrong amount into the till for two weeks running i was doing it wrong instead i was putting in the total amount instead of the declared amount and it was screwing up the whole sheet um, which made me feel really really stupid because i had to then tell tell um, the manager um, in in the community center you know i feel like an idiot but they kept saying you know we all did it when we first started you know but it is a point that people like somebody with fibromyalgia we beat ourselves up even more than um, the average person would yeah that's true very much true well my fiber of fog moment has been um and i guess i'm a little uh, self-conscious about this because you know my my dad just was re, uh, diagnosed with dementia and it's really showing and my mom's memory is is failing too and i've noticed that i've had these moments to where all of a sudden the thought leaves i was doing a uh, facebook live the other day and this gentleman's name that i remember all the time just i couldn't remember during the facebook live and i'm going whoops, I'm having a fibro moment. And you know what? I'm just calling it CRS. And you know what that means? Can't remember sh sh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you kept that clean. <laughs> so there's my fibro moment. You're my fibro fog moment. So there you go. And so. um, you know what? You will, um, with your parents, you will be able to really relate even more because you have fibromyalgia when they've got their diagnosis. Yeah. I'll bet because, um, you know, I uh, I watched a video of a, a nurse um, and she had worked for, for 20 odd years, um, like most of our life on a, a dementia. Um, unit on a ward and she did a, a video um, and this has just come to me now but she did a video saying you know she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and she couldn't believe it and she thought it was like early onset dementia exactly is that so um you will you. be able to understand it works in the back of my mind and go oh my gosh i hope that's not happening to me you know it's just oh Anyway, but I went through this years ago when I first got diagnosed and then, you know, it cleared up and I find that when I'm under uh, periods of stress, 
the memory um, gets challenged a little bit more. So it's the way it is, yeah, it is. So, you know, it kind of runs, you know, you get fatigue and, you know, it, it just runs the gamut. So anyway, shall we move on to the next topic? Yes. Well, you know, um, I've been experimenting a little bit with essential oils. <laughs> and a few years ago, a client of mine, um, you know, they've been into uh, healthy remedies and so forth. And they actually made this homemade brew that they were going to market. And it's very cool. And, um, and I felt so honored that they gave me a proprietary copy of this. And um, I've held on to it, and it's su such a little bit goes a long way. And it made me think about sharing this with all of you, too, and how much this stuff really works and how you can actually make your own at home. This particular brew has MSM in it, emu oil. You know, the, the oils um, like jojoba, ho ho I call it jojoba, but I think it's ho hoba, jojoba oil, uh, you can uh, use almond oil, um, the light oils you can use as carrier oils. They have uh, uh, coconut oil is also another one that will allow the essential oils to mix better and so that they don't evaporate. And then capsicum, capsicum is uh, kind of like red peppers and it keeps, it really helps with pain and what it does is that it goes to the pain center and because it's so hot, it kind of tricks the nerve and can kind of shut down the nerve message. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, I will put a copy of this uh, article up, but I found an article by Organic Authority and I just want to thank these folks for putting this article up on the internet. But it's make your own essential oil uh, sore muscle rub. And having had a cold just about a week ago, I was I had the sore sinuses and so forth. So I was just miserable. And I went ahead and pulled out some essential oils. And doggone, this stuff really does work. I had the eucalyptus oil working and the lavender oil. And I know how much you just love lavender oil, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> but then I have some, um, you know, uh, orange oil and so forth. So I just started playing with it and um, pretty good stuff. So you can make salves and liniments, but um, but there's care, uh, like I was talking about the carrier oils like uh, Jehovah oil, apricot kernel oil, almond oil, sesame oil, um, or you can use a combination of them all. Uh, you just take just a small amount of your essential oils and you can mix them too, such as eucalyptus, cinnamon, peppermint, camphor, rosemary. Oh, rosemary is awesome. And then um, you can take uh, lavender and black pepper oil. And then you can, uh, for salves, you can get some beeswax. And I think you can get that at health uh, health food stores. I haven't purchased any yet, but that's uh, on my list of things to do. I'm going to try this. And it's supposed to be pretty easy to do. You put it in a double boiler and you whip all of the stuff up together, put it in your double boiler, uh, melt down the beeswax, put it in a mason jar, let it cool down, and then you have a salve at home and you rub it into the sore muscles. And um, if you have sore feet, for instance, put it on your feet, put a sock on and voila, you should feel pretty good. So I hope that this all helps you out and I'll put a copy of this article up on the, on the page. So you'll have a copy for yourself. So there you go. You wanna take away the Epsom salts baths? Yeah, I was just looking for the uh, the script there because I'm having to do everything off the computer. And um, sorry about that, guys. My uh, my printer decided to um, go kaput, and um, so I haven't been able to print off uh, the list of stuff. So I'm like looking down and trying to do everything on the laptop at the side there. Um, but yeah, uh, 
when I um, am feeling a bit fatigued and a bit tired and run down, um, I uh, I love to have an Epsom salts bath uh, because it just kind of makes you feel so relaxed. Everything just, it, all the tension just goes away. I mean, I have my baths really piping hot as well. Um, you might want to work up to the piping hot, but me, I just dip straight in there to the piping hot bath. Um, but I think, Christy, you said um, that even if you you don't, you can't be bothered going into the bath, you could be just sitting watching TV with a basin, a basin and uh, just um, pour in the Epsom salts into there and just hot water and just soak your feet into it because it's the magnesium um, it absorbs into the body and works its way through. Um, so, but that really, really does work. I've been using Epsom salts for about nine months now. Yeah. Um, I've been buying it by the bag load. Um, I'm still yet to find a bigger bag, but the biggest bag I've found is like about yeah, pick that up size. four pounds. <laughs> yeah, about four pounds worth. And don't be chintzy, you guys. Use you have to use a significant amount of it to really get the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. But heck, you know, there's there's a comment that I heard is that you got to learn how to float your cork, okay? And your cork's got to be a, you know visualize a cork floating in the water. And that's how you want to be able to be. You want to be able to be relaxed enough to where you're floating your damn cork. Okay. So nice analogy. Yeah. And Epsom salts really helps do that. But if you're not going to get the benefit of it, and I've heard people say, oh, that stuff doesn't work. And I was one of those people until uh, Cynthia Lacunza, our chiropractor up in the Reading area, that said, you're just not using enough of it. You know, get a four pound bag and use half of it. So I actually use about a third of a bag of a four pound bag. That's about about a, a pound, a little over a pound of uh, Epsom salts in a bathtub full of water. So, you know, if you're going to sit in a basin, you know, you still need a significant amount of it. And the whole thing about... <coughs> about skin absorption it's the best way to get that into your body i mean it's just a tremendous way to carry that through your body i will have one about three times a week yeah 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 and you know um a basin is very good but if you don't want to you know take a basin and having to worry about filling it up or whatnot take your bathtub put a chair right next to the bathtub fill your bathtub up to a point to where you stick your feet in there and fill it up to a point to where, you know, it's halfway up your legs, you know, or your calves, I should say, so that your calves are getting uh, the relaxation and, and the feeling of the hot water and, and just sit there for about 20 minutes and read a book, put on some headphones or whatever and relax, float your cork. <laughs> If you got to put a cork in the bathtub to remind you to have a visualization, float the cork and start to relax. But, you know, there, there are so many. Um, we've got an article that we'll put up that's got 20, 20 benefits of Epsom salts. I mean, they're mind-blowing benefits of Epsom salts. And uh, they've been around, been used for thousands of years. And uh, they're just so good for you and such an, a, a natural remedy. So can't say enough about them. And I'm sure that we'll be talking about them again. But they're so essential for muscle and nerve function. And, you know, most people are so deficient of magnesium anyway because we just can't get it in our food. Did you find the article, Amanda? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> there's a couple other things that I wanted to maybe to bring out here. Um, the other thing I didn't realize about magnesium and uh, Epsom salts is that it also improves the circulation. You know, maybe you real this happens with you too. You know, when I get out of an Ep Epsom salt bath, I just start perspiring for a good 20 to 25 minutes later, and I think it's because. What it does is that it improves your circulation, and I think that that's what's happening. And yeah. 
I thought I, you know, I guess I am detoxing from that, but I also think it's from the improved circulation that's going on after getting out of the bathtub. I never thought about that, you know, because I do, you know, <laughs> for the next hour, you know, like that's true. Yeah. And then the other thing it does is that it regulates your blood sugar. So those of you who are having difficulty, maybe you're pre-diabetic or you are diabetic, it's a great way to add on to your diabetic or pre, you know, your insulin resistance uh, re regime to regulate your blood sugar. And you know, a lot of people with fibromyalgia has constipation. They're plugged up. They're they're carrying it with them all the time. You know, so it's a good way to to kind of uh, you know let things go, get it out of you, detox yourself. So there's this is a great article. There's some other things that you can do that's more, um, you know, not so, I'm going to say. Uh, I mentioned the exfoliating your skin the other day, yeah. didn't I? Exfoliating. Um, it is very good for exfoliating. And they have a couple of other household uses that you can use uh, Epsom salts for. You know, it will refresh your laundry, for instance. You know, when you get a detergent built up in your, your, your laundry and your washing machine and so forth, it will help with that as well without uh, damaging the machine. So there's oh, a lot of volume to your hair. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Never, never knew yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. So I hope that helps you guys. So Chris, uh, can you use it another way? Don't have a bath. Hi. Good to see you, Chris. Hi, Keith. Thanks for joining in. Ah, uh, Jehovah Oil. Thank you so much. Um, can you use it another way? Well, Chris, if you have uh, like a basin, that would be a way that you can use uh, the Epsom salt baths or, or the Epsom salts. Anything a uh, uh, Anything that can hold water that you can go ahead and put your feet in or actually uh, sponge it onto your skin um, is the best way. Any way that you can get it onto your skin and do it, uh, keep put, applying it to your skin for about 20 minutes would be a great way to do it. Okay, I hope that answers your question. So let's go on to the next topic, huh? So... There are some characteristics, uh, personality characteristics of those with fibromyalgia. Without, and, going, without going into um, the, the post about it, um, personally, just off the top of my head, I would, I would say um, people with fibromyalgia are very sensitive very 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 sensitive they're very sensitive people um that that is like a huge characteristic um that is like the num i would say that really is number one yeah. um, for characteristic um quite emotional people i'd say emotional too and and um and can feel um not only emotionally but uh feel you know uh physically feel you know um mm -hmm. uh, might be able to be more sensitive to hearing. Everything just seems to, I like to refer to fibromyalgia like a volume knob. Um, we just turned right up. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes and the same thing with pain. It could be turned up or we can turn it down. And the same thing with fibromyalgia, it can be set off by light, noise, um, Funny little story I got to share with you. Um, I was with a bunch of ladies, and you know how us ladies can get a little bit loud, a little cackly sounding, a little screechy with our voices. And it's just the way we are. It's the way we're wired. And I was in the backseat of the car, and I was having a difficult time with my fibromyalgia. In fact, I had flown across country, so I was a little jet lagged. And I was in the back of the car with these women, and it was just too loud for me. And I just could, I was just, I, I felt like I was shrinking into my own little space because it was so loud and the volume was turned up so much 
And the person I was with, I said, does this seem really loud to you? And she didn't think anything of it. But to me, it just seemed so hype, you know, hyper loud. And I was so sensitive. It just felt like the voices were jumping off of my skin. And uh, so I don't know. Can any of you relate to that? I mean, it's just, uh, it's just. What I can kind of relate. Yeah. So everything like that's that. going on around about, um, you're affected by it. Everything. You're yeah. more aware. Yeah. You have you have a much higher awareness. Yes. Um, and I don't know if that is due to sensitivity or what, but um, yeah. Uh, I am, like, yeah, Chris, with the bright lights, especially. Come to think of it, when I leave, um, when I leave the the homeless unit, um, when I help out, like when I go and do a, a shift there on a night shift, when I've been sitting in that office. Um, when I leave in the morning, it's seven in the morning, it's light. I feel that my head and the bright light going straight out into the bright light that affects me and causes migraines. Yeah, you know, there's kind of a little digression, but I wanted to address that because, um, you know, I, I suffer with the migraines too. And uh, recently I just got a pair of sunglasses called cocoons. And cocoons actually has like this little shelf. You know how you wear your glasses? Light can get in behind the glasses and they can get in on the sides. And so I wear prescription glasses anyway. So these sunglasses fit over my glasses and they have these little, like I said, a little shelf. And as soon as I put them on, I just feel the muscles in my my forehead and within my eyes just relax. And it's just amazing. And But it's true, you know, Chris uh, and Amanda, I get the same way. Light can just trigger a migraine headache and just intensify and can actually dictate how the rest of the day is going to be. If uh, if I get out in the bright light first thing in the morning and it, I'm just, you know, kind of set up and ready for a migraine that day. So uh, those pair of cocoons has been a lifesaver. And you can find them on Amazon.com, any kind of sporting goods uh, store. So anyway, as I digress on that. But, you know, I found this article in Psychology Today, and it was written by um, – a therapist who has some um, uh, chronic pain disorder herself. And so it was good to see this article that she wrote because as she's dealing with people um, who also has pain disorders and all the, also those with uh, personality disorders, she was able to put this into a kind of a different perspective that I think we all can relate to. And what she summed it up to be is that, you know, most doctors just don't want to deal with us. In a lot of ways, they just uh, throw us because we're so difficult to deal with as far as a, a diagnostic pr uh, perspective. There isn't, mm -hmm. uh, they can't put a stethoscope on us and tell us what's wrong with us. They can't run a blood test and tell us what's wrong with us. And they can't give us a medication that's going to resolve it like an antibiotic would get rid of a, an infection. And then the same thing with those that have personality disorders, you know, those are people that are extremely uh, emotional and uh, it's not so much that there's problems with them. It's just that in, in people with personality disorders, they have, um, let's say they have heightened sensitivities as well that affects their personalities. Whereas with fibromyalgia, we have heightened sensitivities that affect our, let's see if I can say it, muscu musculoskeletal system. And uh, this is why it's actually been now recategorized more of a neurological type of system or system uh, problem because it runs along our nervous system. And so um, we're, we deal with a, a bias, you know, people with chronic pain, you know, we're often as uh, maligned as difficult, 
and uh, they don't want to, like I said, p um, healthcare professionals don't want to treat people with either part, either one of these conditions. And so, you know, um, and, and fibromyalgia has been called kind of a, a garbage can diagnosis. I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, I don't feel very good known. Well, a garbage you know, can diagnosis, you know. <laughs> the, the thing is, um, how they how they ultimately diagnose through like a whole host of tests, but then um, they boil it down to a sheet of symptoms. Right many symptoms now if you have so many of those symptoms on the sheet then you're classed and categorized as fibromyalgia right however not each person will have the same host of symptoms of that that sheet which then makes you wonder does each person have a different illness let's see chris says i get told to learn how to manage it by Doc in a nice way. I think his hands are tied to how he can help me suggest I talk. You see, exactly, Chris. They want to send you over to mental health professional because they think it's it's in your head, but it's really not. You know, and I'm so sorry that that's happening to you because it is wrong. Your doctor should realize that it is a physical condition. It is not a mental condition. The physical condition can cause a mental, not a mental, I'm not going to even call it that. It can cause some depression down the road because of the fatigue and the frustration it causes. A lot of times from the frustration of not getting the attention that you need from your medical professionals. We may go mental, but we are <laughs> not mental. <laughs> you know, I, I, I so appreciate what you're saying, Chris, and uh, I'm so sorry that you're going through that because I went through that myself. And, you know, I hopefully um, you will find a practitioner that will align with you and understand and respect the fact that it is not a mental health problem, that there might be some mental health components that do develop because of that. You know, I went through a uh, clinical depression as a result of the fibromyalgia because of the pure exhaustion and the fatigue that my can fibromyalgia just, caused. Can, can I just say, um, of course, please. Don't, don't, like, in my personal opinion, um, and, and, you know, I have obviously experience in this and trying to get better. Um, I got better when... I stepped away from the medical. I got better when I stepped away. Don't go looking for that doctor because really ultimately you're not going to find that doctor in a medical practice. You are going to find that doctor in yourself and building your own knowledge and uh, educating yourself and what's good for your body because nobody knows your body like you do. OK, and nobody knows what you're going through um, as much as you do. So the best way to do it is like we have done. We've educated ourselves. We've we've learned to manage and um, with with certain things. And this is why we we want to share. Sh this is why we want to to share all this information with others so that we can then show other people how we've managed. You know, and I agree with that, but I, I also want to address one thing now. And this is very important to those who may be considering um, going, and this is one of the topics we're going to talk about here today, is when to decide that you might have to hang it up, when you might have to stop working, because you have to go to the doctor. You have to be established because if you are going to go out on disability, you must have it in your medical record and have it, have it documented by a medical professional. You can <clears throat> say that you have had your activities of daily living has been uh, affected in such a way to where you cannot work. And so I'm sorry. Um, you know, I agree with that, Amanda, but yet there is also that that other journey you must go through. If if in you the, are in the UK, um, it's not as advanced 
in the UK as the US though. The US, you could, there is a lot more help in the US than there is in the UK because we are only just being recognised as it being, as it existing really. Um, they, their own, I mean, we're still um, sending out petitions to have it recognised as a disability. You know, so we, these are kind of ahead and there's been a lot more research done um, in the US as well. Well, with it being recategorized as ME now, um, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I think it's coming your way. So don't despair. It is coming. But I know um, it wasn't just, in, it was the same thing here. You know, I first encountered this uh, over 10 years ago. And I didn't get the, you know, the recognition for it until just about two years ago. So it was a battle, a long battle. Hi, Corinder. So, um, and yes, your doctor can make you feel terrible and it can make you feel like a fraud. Uh, I even had a judge here in the United States because, you know, I had to go through the disability process who actually felt like, who actually said that I might have actually been maling uh, malingering my problem. And it's like, I felt like, you know, giving her the, the single, single fingered salute because she wasn't walking in my shoes. And, and I, was, <laughs> I was giving up a wonderful career to go on disability for a meager, um, you know, survival type of income that nobody should have to be able to live on, but it was it was better than nothing. And I was fighting for that. And to have somebody say that I was mal malingering myself to walk away from what I walked away from, I mean, it was just absolutely insulting. So Anyway, um, are they afraid that people want to give up working? I think that, Chris, some people do work the system, but I'm going to say 99% of the people that are going through the things that we're going through, no, they're, they're not. And what you're going to get from government assistance <clears throat> is not enough to, go give, to make it worth, you know, giving up what you've worked your entire life for to go on disability for. It, it's, it's just ludicrous to me. So when you need disability, you're, it's because you need it. Mm -hmm. You're going on a disability show. Hey, we'd like to know more about that, Corinder. Excellent. So um, anyway, we've got an article here that's uh, by, uh, from WebMD. It is a website here in the United States, and it's like uh, you're on a stage two disabling at work for a time off. Excellent. Excellent, Chris. Wow. So good for you. Keep fighting, you guys. Keep fighting. And I want to add something to what um, what Amanda said. Two prongs. For me, I had to go two prongs. I had to go down the medical pathway to get to a point to where I could stabilize my life because it was in, down, in a downward spiral. I needed to have that financial support so that I could stop that spiral. Once I stabilized, I found a pathway which eventually brought us, Amanda and I together, which brought us to you and found a way of, of self-healing. And, you know, and it was through another organization and it's, it's kind of a long explanation and we're glad to do that maybe at another time, but it was to where we were encouraged to work on ourselves, to build ourselves up, to believe in ourselves, to, to just accept us for where we are at this point in time, to read um, in, in inspiring quotes, you know, to just continually build ourselves up regardless of what we're dealing with. There are people that are in the home-based uh, business profession who, you know, have disabilities that are way beyond what we are all dealing with. And it's absolutely amazing that they are out there just, just doing amazing things and they are so inspiring. And to have found those people and to have connected with them actually gives you some energy and makes you wanna go out there and 
and share and help others. And this is why we're doing what we're doing here right now. And uh, I tell you, it, it, it made a big change for me. It helped me uh, just do a, a 180 from where I was and help kind of reshape how I deal with pain. And I still have the pain. Nothing's really changed in that regard. But I just don't take the medication I used to take. I, a lot of things just change because my mindset towards everything changed. So it's not mental in any way, and it isn't anything that my doctor gave me, but my doctor was a part of the whole pathway to where I am at right now, and that was my own personal journey. So that's all I have to say about that. Reestablishing your identity. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, and getting rid of that stigma. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, let's move on, shall we? Uh, let's see. What? Oh, here's one for you. How about a little uh, entertainment and little excitement in the bedroom, huh? Want to take <laughs> that one, Amanda? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the other day, um, I uh, sent Christy a really nice little message, didn't I? Yes, she did. <laughs> um, along the lines of, you know, if I had more sex, you know, I probably feel a lot less tension. <laughs> I probably feel a lot more healed. A woman has needs, you know, <laughs> and it's true because. Um, I was I was sitting thinking about it and I was being serious. I was being really serious. I wasn't even just being funny. I, although it was funny, ironic in the sense, you know, but I was being serious, you know. Um, when you have constant chronic fatigue and constant pain, your body is feeling unloved. Your body is feeling like really horrible and you know and you're feeling okay and you might put weight on and you might you know there's lots of things that are wrong with you so you're feeling really down with this so a bit of affection a bit of love um a bit of hanky panky you know but in the bedroom department is going to make you feel ah and i'm not being funny it is it is proven scientifically that an orgasm actually makes you feel Whew. You know, well, big endorphin release. You release, you're releasing those pain relieving endorphins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have an issue with with giggle. Hubby is brilliant. <laughs> yes, 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 excellent, excellent. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, it is such a good point, and it's kind of an edgy, touchy point. But you're, it's absolutely right, Amanda. Yeah, you bet. You know, you're most loved and you're most affectioned and, you know, you feel, you know, that really at home feeling and you're relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, and it's not about, you know, the, uh, you know. I'd rather the, that than the Epsom salts bath. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For relaxation. <laughs> well, you're floating your cork, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's funny uh, as you're talking about that, and we're not we're not talking about you know the raging hormone, you know, um, gotta you know do it, it, you know, moment you think about oh raging sex kind of stuff. It's just that um, you know, some it's just the connection, you know. Yeah. Sometimes the body just hurts so much that just it, it's not so much the the whole sexual act. It's right, Chris. It's it's cuddling. It's just you know hugging. You know just the connection. You know the that there is, there is a bit of a point to hit upon on this though, in a serious on a serious level. Okay, um, when people uh, when when um, those uh, diagnosed with um, fibromyalgia are going through the the um, process from the very start of going through all the, the tests and everything, um, it can actually take a lot out of a relationship. 
Yes, and it does. And then, and then you're, you, there's less affection where really you need more, you know, and that I've spoken to a lot of people and this has been the case, you know, and the partner, and um, there's various ways to look at the partner is really tired of going through all of the, the um, palaver that you're going through because they feel it as well. It's that they, they're going through it just as much as we are, you know, um, but then um, there, there's a the fact of they don't understand it completely and therefore sometimes they don't want to hurt you true exactly yeah they don't want to hurt you mm -hmm. so yeah very good point very very good point so yes Chris always cuddle I think that's a good point you bet I like a good cuddle yeah exactly well you know it's just normal you know for humans they need they need to uh, just touch and contact so mm -hmm. I think an important thing so well we're going to finish off with uh our marketing moment and amanda's got some awesome uh, uh tasks that she has outlined for another group that she uh that she leads and she broke she's going to kind of share some things with uh with us so when we're having uh you know our fibro moments you know what are the most you know, important things to get done. And there's kind of like a, you know, a smorgasbord of things that we can look at and choose from just so that we can keep our businesses going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is, um, <clears throat> if you have a, a, an online business um, and uh, you have um, a, a chronic condition where you're tired and you, you can't be bothered to doing everything, um, that's that that's a lot of coaches will tell you to do you know there's a lot of coaches and it causes a little bit more pressure on you and um, but I have learned to adjust things now I do have um, a group uh, for um, just a whole host of uh, clients and um, learning how to market and um, so this is a checklist that I have um, as a pin post in that group for them. Um, however, I'm going to go through it bit by bit, but tell you how you can adjust that um, for your personal needs as I do, because I don't do everything on it, but it gives you a checklist to go by to, to try and pick some from, um, because we all know that focus is um, quite difficult sometimes, and you need that checklist to just run over now and again to keep you on the right direction. I know that I need that. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, we'll start with your personal profile, okay? So um, a live video, okay? Um, and uh, a, another couple of posts uh, and uh, trying to send out a daily um, email broadcast. Now, don't worry if you can't do it all. This is an important thing. If you can't do it all, for somebody with um, chronic fatigue, you don't want to get yourself stressed out over it. Um, I've I've done below this um, some post ideas, okay? So um, inspirational quotes, uh, life experiences. Um, so a, a quote with a picture, or you have the new um, the new coloured um, thing for your text to go in. You can do a quote on there. Um, uh, your life experience so if you're out doing something post about it let people know that you're out and about and that you're doing things okay post a picture of you visiting somewhere post a picture of you out with the family these are just types of content that you can share so you don't have to do all of this but um by doing at least one a day the important thing is the most important thing is showing that your page is active and that you're consistent, okay? So I took a dip um, at Christmas time, okay? And after Christmas time, because I was caring for somebody, so I was really tired and it just took all of my energy and I was doing a lot of traveling by public transport. Um, however, a lot of people had no idea that um, that I was I was as tired as, uh, <laughs> as I actually was because I was making sure I was putting something each day. I was posting, oh, on the train, on the journey. I'd done a quick video when I could. You know, I didn't worry about if I couldn't because I knew, you know, all it takes is just a picture of a coat and just some little advice on the top was all I was going to need to do to make sure my page was at least active. 
um, ensuring that you're still speaking to people. You know, you need to, in order for your business to thrive, you need to ensure that you're speaking to people. So the most important thing is making sure you've got one post on your page a day and use your time, your energy, if you're in really bad condition, to speak to people because your business can only thrive if you're speaking to people, okay? Um, now, if you're having a better day, you can do all of the things, you know? And then you're gonna feel great because you've achieved so much as well. So um, life experiences, um, then uh, yeah, the images, lifestyle quotes, um, funny pictures, uh, something to, to get people engaged. Like I, I posted a picture the other day, I was doing a, 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 I was playing around with Snapchat and did you see this Christy? <laughs> I ended up with um, <laughs> I, I it was ears, but um, the ears appeared here as well, and it ended up with like a moustache. But the, the it was like there was eyes as well, these creepy, and it looked like the devil was on my face. You know, it was really creepy. But I was like, oh my god, that's like I have to share that. So I was like, so when a Snapchat moment goes wrong, you know. <laughs> That. so it's something amusing and the feedback I got from that because engagement on your page is important yeah whatever the it is your post and engagement and um when you're in online business and stuff if you're sharing something about snapchat it's still social media related yeah. so it's just funny okay so um that's fine um uh, doing doing blogs now this isn't a must and um, try and do one once a week I struggle with this because of my focus um, I'm not gonna lie to you I do struggle with this but when when I do do one I make sure it's a good one okay so you don't stress yourself out and there's no point in just putting any old thing up there you want it to be quality so only do a blog post if your head's in it and your heart's in it because you want it to be something really seriously worthwhile, okay? Um, also, can let me add something in there, Amanda. You know, uh, Facebook is actually uh, giving more emphasis to the notes section. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but under the more tab, there's the notes section. You can do it on your personal page as well. Yes, and they're actually letting you put images in there and links and so they're treating it kind of like a blog section so if you're having difficulty putting a blog in there and uh, it's just i'm not saying you know default to your facebook page because you know we'll talk about the issues about putting all things on the facebook page too that could actually be you know a, a problem for you should your page go down but it is an alternative for putting content out there that you can um, use, you know, uh, put you know, out there and then maybe take off and put someplace else at another time. Well, the thing is, um, like on that, uh, you could, um, you could, and uh, just just a, a, a thought there, um, if you're posting it on your page uh, during the week and you're doing things like that, Take a look through and take all your points from your page during the week. And then at the weekend, you know, if you've got time, you know, don't stress yourself. The important thing is do not stress yourself if you can't do it because stress will make you ill. Stress will make you tense. Stress will cause you pain. Then you'll be put out for the next entire week. So that I cannot emphasize that enough. OK, because the thing is. When you do do the things and you can get a lot done, that's when you feel really achieved. So you want to keep yourself as minimal stress as possible. But you could you could take all your points from the week um, that you've done in your Facebook, you know, refresh your brain. If you've done a live video, turn that into a blog post. So I spoke a bit about repurposing content um, last week. Um, and you can go, if anybody didn't see the live last week um, of our broadcast, um, then you can check out, we've got on um, YouTube and SoundCloud as well. So you can listen to us on the move um, if you want to hear our voices again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's always ways to work around everything, okay? There's always ways. Um, also, uh, if you're a way to like a meeting with a prospect, tell people that can be a post just right. a way to meet this lovely 
blah, 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 you know, um, a nice business meeting, had a nice business lunch with this person uh, and we were at and tagging the place that you were at. You know, there's so many things you can do. Um, uh, photos of you and your team, if you've got a team. Um, now, if you've got a team, okay, you always have a team because the people that you're working beside, regardless if they're under you or above you, they're still your team. OK, so regardless if you've got any signed up team or not, um, you class everybody around you and everybody you're working with is your team. Now, um, Christy, I'll just explain that a bit. Christy, um, we are not um, linked, i.e. monetary ways in any way. Um, you know, like we are we we are just linked because we found each other and we're like we connect as a team. You know, so yeah. your team is what you make around you. OK, and um, you can have somebody in another company that you're working with to keep motivated and everything. That's a member of your team because yeah. you, they're working with you. OK, your team is what you make it. And um, so uh, duh, 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 curiosity posts um, I'm off the top of my head. I can't think of a curiosity post. Um, Christy, you're good at these. Oh gosh, having a fibro moment. A curiosity, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, well, let's take. Uh, can sex make <laughs> you a better marketer? Well, listen in to the, today's uh, live, and I'll tell you how. That could be a curiosity post. You know, Perfect, that, because somebody's going to see that and they're going to be, ooh, that yeah. sounds interesting. I'm curious about this. Uh, we might use this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm going to share that on my wall. <laughs> see how many people pop by for a listen. <laughs> but, yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect, Christy. Um, I knew you you would be able to think of something. Um, uh, webinar links. Um, you might have a uh, webinars um, through a company you're with um, that you're partnered with or something. You know, um, you might be doing a webinar or you know, there, there's you've always got something you can be sharing. We have um, wake up calls. We have uh, we have webinar trainings and stuff we can share through the organisation that we use, um, and that as well um, is really really good curiosity and to to have people come along and see what you're doing as well um so these that was um like post ideas so you you don't have to do all of them but yeah. by looking at all of them you know you have people are like i have nothing to post i didn't know what to post there's so much choice that isn't even at all OK, that's just that's just a nice little kind of idea and uh, a checklist to go by to refresh your mind, to keep yeah, you motivated. Yeah. So you could you could do um, a, 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 um, the easier ones are sharing a quote. Don't just make your page all quotes all of the time. Right, Try and right. mix it up a bit because there's lots of people that are out there saying they're, they're network marketers and all they're doing is sharing quotes all flipping day, you know, and, you know, they need to be given a little bit more than just so you could have a, a picture of um, of something, uh, I don't know, like a team picture and then giving tips on how to build a team yeah, you know yeah. you you could and it takes two minutes to just write something up okay so write a little bit about mindset and show a picture of a brain or whatever you know it yeah. doesn't take long to do that so um let me just go down to fan page we can put we this document up in a, in a, oops we can put this document up in the um on the page right yeah Yep. Yep. All I right. Don't mind. Um, shall, uh, we, shall we? Be so. let, let me let me let me think about what to do with that. Actually, um, okay. well, we'll have a think about how we're going to um, show that document and um, how we're going to put it out. Um, and uh, but you'll be sure to all know anybody listening, anybody watching, and um, you you will know when it's up. Okay, and you'll know when it's up. It won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, okay, so your fan page. Um, 
it is pretty much um, the same as your personal page. However, um, you want to make it a bit more businessy. Um, you want it. You don't want it to all be just you out and about. You know, um, like with the kids and things like that. You know, um, because you would have a lot of that on your personal page. Um, uh, stats on your daily activities so if you've been doing any email marketing you could show your stats off um, of how many leads you you gathered you could show um, uh, blah, 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 blah. other stats other stats and um, what you've earned you know that's curiosity as well people are like oh how did they earn all that money or how did they earn that today and you know so that that's good as well um, uh, videos, articles, blogs. Now, if you are new um, and you're you're very fresh to an uh, online business, then yeah, go ahead and share relevant stuff um, from from like from like business uh, blogs and things like that, um, articles and stuff. But when you've been in the business for a little while, you want to be sharing your own content okay because that's branding you okay don't just forever be sharing everybody else's stuff okay right. you want to create your own stuff right. um, and if you do oh, whoops if you do share um if you do share other people's stuff make sure that you put in the source if the source isn't clear already okay make sure this because you don't want to be getting all the credit for for the work that somebody else has done okay that goes for pictures and um, and uh, posts and uh, you know you get done for copyright and stuff so I just want to be clear on that to save yourselves um, uh, so post um post some images you know like uh, business kind of images you know um, Random questions. Uh, so, can you think of random questions like curiosity questions? Maybe we can offer a uh, special webinar on how to do this stuff mm -hmm. and go over some of this stuff with people because it is a lot of stuff. <clears throat> yeah, then, how to pick out the various things. Because um, I find difficulty getting a lot of this stuff done myself, you know, and then I have to pick out what is the most important thing for me to do that day. It might be, um, you know, like you're talking about um, a curiosity post or uh, an inspiration post. You know, one of the things that has worked very well for me is finding a very good stock photo, which stock photos, folks, are, are free photos that you can share commercially. They're, you can get uh, be as yeah, well. They're royalty free, and you find a quote that you like, and you just put it over the the image, and you can do it through a program called Canva, and you put that up on your page, and there is a way that you can grow that post organically. I mean, I have one that's grown over eleven thousand views with just one. Uh, one uh what is it called um uh, inspirational quote oh right okay yeah <laughs> and, and it's uh really built the reach on my page just from one inspirational quote i mean mm -hmm. it's amazing but it, it it's these things are very powerful the things that you're sharing here extremely mm -hmm. powerful so yes yeah, so we won't we won't do um anymore because um i'll be here all week however all these things um that i've shared you don't have to do them all you can pick pick what's most important like i said um make sure you're putting at least one piece out of that content list out of those ideas make sure you're picking at least one thing because you want to make sure your page is active and looks active and show people because when people you're speaking to people you want to make sure that you're speaking to people but when you're speaking to them you want to the first thing they're going to do is look at your page 
Yes. You're going to look at your page. So you want to show something worthwhile that backs up what you're saying in private message. You have to back up everything because people will be watching you, even if you don't think they're watching oh, you. Yes, they are. I've had people watching me for a year and they're just coming out of the woodwork now and saying, I've been watching you for blah, blah. I love your story. And, you know, and I'm like, whoa, they've been hiding in the shadows. <laughs> they, do. they really do. They do. So this is good stuff, my friend. Very, very good. And uh, gosh, I hope uh, I like the topics that we had today. They're very well rounded, and I hope they're very helpful to people. And and uh, got very organized this week so that we have links to go with the things that we shared with you. So that uh, for some of you that just. Uh, might have a little difficulty watching the video again. Maybe uh, you can listen to the SoundCloud uh, audio, or if you like to read, then you'll have some articles here for you to, to read along with the uh, with uh, the content here off of the video or the SoundCloud audio. So, um, but anyway, I think uh, this concludes our broadcast. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, end the broadcast with today, Amanda? Actually, yes, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody, including yourself, honey bun, Christy. Um, everybody who has given us so much support already, you know. Um, we've had people contacting us that, you know, we've never met before and they've been just finding us through hashtags and, and things like that, you know. Um, and uh, also, one last thing, and I've been saying this every week, and I'm going to say it every week until I find what I want. <laughs> I want to find a male entrepreneur that has fibromyalgia to come on our show as a guest. Okay, yeah. because I think that um, the the male fibro warriors they need to be um, have a bit of awareness as well because it seems to be all women. Um, and I really would like to help raise awareness for you guys as well. Well, we may just have somebody here, Amanda, and we'll talk about that offline. Okay, dokie. Okay, dokie. Well, thank you, everybody. Hey, if anybody knows anybody that uh, Amanda just mentioned that we're looking for that male entrepreneur who has fibromyalgia, please send them our way, and we'd like to chat with them, see if uh, they'd like to come on and uh, share some of their wisdom with you. So anyway, we'll call that a wrap, huh? Yes, yes, I think we've tired our viewers out. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.